Well, the first thing you need to look at is why you need a better data center design. Roughly 87% of data centers were built prior to 2001, and it's very important for the enterprise to maintain this investment. In addition, 70% of these data centers are in major need of expansion, so server growth, storage growth, things like that. Efficient data center design could save upwards of 20 billion kilowatt hours per year by 2015. To put that into perspective, it's worth about $2 billion in annual electricity costs, equating to roughly 1.8 million American homes. Another benefit is the fact that you could potentially defer the need to build 2,300 megawatts of generating capacity. What this does is avoid 3.4 million metric tons of CO2 emissions, and that's roughly equivalent to 675,000 cars on the road. Again, to put these things into perspective. Power per cubic meter is increasing 2x with hardware miniaturization and density improvements. And I think one of the more interesting points here is the typical cost within the data center itself. 55% roughly is, is spent on power and cooling, while 45% is spent on server load or computing operations. And this is a bit backwards, where a better practice would be to reduce the power and cooling to roughly 35%. And I think one of the more interesting trends that I'm seeing out there in the market today is the fact that IT managers are, be are beginning to define data centers in terms of total kilowatts instead of total number of servers. So now it's important to look at some of the design details around data center design. There's two high-level goals which are relatively obvious, resiliency and energy efficiency. If you look at high-level efficiency opportunities, there's really three options. You've got power distribution and conversions, you've got server and load computing operations, and you've got cooling equipment, three of the, ba three of the big issues. High-level facilities issues include looking at it kind of from an outside-in perspective. Essentially what that means is you're looking at the site or the facility layout first, where others look at it from an inside-out perspective, focusing on the IT infrastructure prior to the facility layout. Cooling is a major issue. Um, if you look at legacy perimeter cooling, for example, you can cool two to three kilowatts per rack. Today's power demand is now 10 to 30 kilowatts per rack, so you have to put in some type of new cooling infrastructure. So what people are doing is moving to in-row cooling or things like liquid cooling, which is somewhat of a cold water radiator per rack. Some additional design details are, uh, you know, some of them are really simple, such as basic airflow management, better baffling. Uh, you've got raised floor and data centers, so you want to make sure the airflow gets to the perforated tiles. You want to manage your hot and cold aisle design and contain hot and cold air within those aisles and things like blanking panels to eliminate hot air from going into the cold aisles. Digitization is another issue. Now that power supplies are digital devices, you can have an asset map and better asset management. Um, right sizing your UPS or uninterruptible power supplies is, is a key. So if 100 kilowatts is the requirement, you should put in a 100 kilowatt supply that can scale versus, for example, putting in a 200 kilowatt su supply. And the, the benefit here is you can double efficiency. Uh, some other things that you can do, improve electrical infrastructure, some things that uh, the facilities managers and IT managers are looking at are these rebate and certificate programs that are being adopted by major utilities. A little further out, they're looking at alternative power sources such as hydro, wind, and fuel cells. And even some data centers are looking at considering outsources. I was talking with a very large um, investment bank on Wall Street and they're very strict with their data and what they're looking at doing is potentially outsourcing less critical or tier two or tier three services to an external data center while managing internal tier one services within their own data center. So outsourcing again is another um, movement that we'll probably see happening over time.